and a welcome back. We know how the RoboFriends app works now with React. That's great, but Bruno asked us a specific thing. We need to add Redux to our RoboFriends app so that it can scale well and handle state management better. Now, with these next videos, we're going to work together. Step by step, I'm going to show you how Redux is implemented and how it works. And you're going to be following along, trying to make sure that your code works as well. All right, so take a pause now and get your environment set up so you can code along with me. You're all set? All right, I'm going to get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I have my RoboFriends app. So I'm going to clone this repo. And we'll just do our regular setup with git clone. And then I'm going to cd into my RoboFriends. Perfect. Let's open this up in your text editor. And again, I love joining these together. So it looks nice and clean. Perfect. Now, obviously, the first thing we need to do when we clone something is npm install to make sure we have all the packages. And we also want to make sure that everything is running smoothly without any errors whatsoever. So the next step is going to be to run npm start. All right, perfect. Everything is working and we should be able to filter. Perfect. All right, so we're familiar with this code base. We have our React app, but that's it. Just a simple React app with containers and components. The very first thing we would want to do is install Redux. So I'm going to close this and run npm install Redux. This Redux package will give us some tools in order to incorporate Redux into our React app. But here's the cool part with the Redux package and why I'm such a big fan. It's that 90% of your code is still going to be JavaScript. Redux is going to give you a few helpers, but you're still writing JavaScript. It's still improving your JavaScript skills when you write Redux. And it teaches really, really good principles, which is why I'm such a big fan of the library. You might not always need Redux in your projects, but it is just a good, good tool to learn because it has such great concepts that you'll use throughout your career. Now, the second thing we need and this is something similar with React. Remember how we installed the React package? And then we also needed something called the React DOM package to connect React to the DOM? Well, in similar fashion, we need to connect Redux to React because Redux theoretically could work with any other library. By adding another package, we can again let React know that, hey, we're going to be using Redux with you. So that's very easy to do. We'll just npm install. And the package is called React Redux. And the way this React Redux is going to work is that it's going to connect only the containers, so in this case, app.js, to the what we call a Redux store, or that big JavaScript object we're talking about that describes the state of our app. And they're going to communicate. The container is going to communicate with the store and vice versa. Now, the other components, what we call DOM or presentational components, won't know that Redux exists. The only connection is going to be between something called a container or a smart component and the Redux store. So let me show you what I mean. If you remember this diagram, we've just installed the Redux package, which you can think of it as being over here. This red box that allows us to create a store and a couple of other help functions. 
We also downloaded React Redux, which allows us to connect these two pieces. And React Redux is able to be used in order to say, hey, we want these yellow components to be aware that we're using Redux and to get their state from the Redux store. So just think of this diagram as we're working through it. All we're doing is essentially connecting these two libraries together. All right, so now that we have these two packages, we can start importing them and using it within our app. But that's for the next couple of the videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.